Tennessee and Kentucky are unique in their geographic position in the United States. They straddle the line between the industrious northern states and the culturally southern states, and it's for this reason that they're often compared with each other constantly. But over the last few decades, Tennessee has grown much faster than its northern neighbor, so why don't more people live in Kentucky? Welcome to Geography by Jeff. Today we're off to America's heartland to explore the population discrepancy between two states that, on a map, look pretty similar overall. But despite this apparent similarity, Tennessee has millions of more people than Kentucky, and as usual, there's a geographic reason for that. But first, this week's podcast episode is all about St. Patrick's Day. The culturally Irish holiday has spread around the world to become not just the greenest holiday, but also the booziest. Listen now to get prepared for your St. Patrick's Day festivities right here on YouTube or on whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. All links are in the description below. Tennessee and Kentucky, two states that share a long border, also share a long history that dates back thousands of years. Before the arrival of European settlers, these lands were home to various Native American cultures, each contributing to the region's diverse historic and cultural heritage. Around the year 900, the Mississippian culture would establish themselves across both of the states we know today. And it's from this culture that many of the current native tribes would come from. Both states were originally inhabited by indigenous tribes, such as the Muscogean-speaking peoples, Cherokee-speaking peoples, and Algonquin-speaking peoples. These tribes were deeply connected to the land, with sophisticated societies that engaged in farming, hunting, trading, and even war against one another. The Cherokee, in particular, were well known for their advanced language and even managed to form an independent nation for a time under the United States. For all of these tribes though, the arrival of European explorers and settlers in the 1500s marked the beginning of profound changes. Spanish, French, and later British explorers ventured into these territories, driven by the promise of wealth and new lands for colonization. The competition between the European powers would eventually include these same native tribes as well. The Chickasaw Wars, fought in the early 1700s, saw the Chickasaw tribe ally with the British against the French and their allies, the Choctaws, Quapaw, and Illinois Confederation. By the mid-18th century, as part of the wider British colonial efforts, settlers began moving into what is now Kentucky and Tennessee, attracted by fertile lands and the prospect of a new life. Daniel Boone, one of the most iconic figures of American frontier lore, played a significant role in the exploration and settlement of Kentucky, leading settlers through the Cumberland Gap into the heart of the Bluegrass region. Tennessee's path to statehood began with the establishment of the Watauga Association in 1772, a semi-autonomous government created by frontier settlers. This early attempt at self-government laid the groundwork for Tennessee's development. The region, initially the far western part of North Carolina, became the territory of the United States south of the River Ohio in 1790. Following a period of rapid growth and development, Tennessee was admitted to the Union as the 16th state in 1796. Kentucky's journey to statehood was similarly marked by a push for autonomy and settlement. Initially part of Virginia, Kentucky became a distinct territory as settlers pushed for independence from Virginia's distant eastern government located in Richmond. After several attempts, Kentucky was admitted to the Union as the 15th state in 1792, following the resolution of various legal and territorial disputes. The admission of Tennessee and Kentucky as states marked a significant phase in the westward expansion of the United States. While both states were the far western region of Virginia and North Carolina respectively, becoming their own administrative states was integral for the United States to claim land. That said, this expansion was not without cost, leading to further displacement and suffering of the indigenous populations, who were forced from their lands through treaties, warfare, and the encroachment of settlers. Tennessee and Kentucky exist in a fascinating region of the country. It's a little bit southern, a little bit northern, and a little bit midwest depending on where you are within each state. But before we get to the geography of these two states, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. More fun geography videos are just a single click away. Nestled within the heartland of the United States, Tennessee and Kentucky boast a fascinating combined physical geography that feature a vast array of different ecosystems. From the rugged Appalachians to the fertile plains, the geography influences the culture, economy, and way of life for both states. In Tennessee, the geography is neatly divided into three grand regions. 
each with its own distinct characteristic. The eastern part of the state is dominated by the Appalachian Mountains, including the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, the most visited national park in the country by a wide margin. The rugged terrain with its high peaks and deep valleys has played a significant role in shaping the culture of Tennessee, becoming one of the first major obstacles for settlement that pioneers encountered. Transitioning westward, the Cumberland Plateau and the Highland Rim encircled the Nashville Basin in Middle Tennessee. The Cumberland Plateau, stretching into the eastern part of this central region, is characterized by flat-topped mountains, deep gorges, and a wealth of coal deposits. The Nashville Basin, meanwhile, is known for its rich soils and has historically been a center for agriculture and, later, urban and industrial development. Finally, in the far west lies the Mississippi Alluvial Plain, marked by low, flat lands that gradually slope towards the Mississippi River. The fertile land here is ideal for agriculture, particularly cotton, soybeans, and corn, underpinning the region's economy. The Mississippi River itself is a vital waterway for commerce and recreation for the state's population. Meanwhile, Kentucky's physical geography, while sharing borders and some similarities with Tennessee, has its own distinct natural identity. The state is primarily divided into five major geographic regions, the Cumberland Plateau, the Bluegrass Region, the Penurau Plateau, the Western Coal Fields, and the Jackson Purchase. The Cumberland Plateau in eastern Kentucky mirrors its Tennessee counterpart, offering rugged mountain landscapes and rich natural resources including coal. The heart of Kentucky is the Bluegrass Region, enveloping the central part of the state with its fertile soils and gentle rolling hills. This iconic landscape is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also serves as the foundation for Kentucky's renowned horse breeding and racing industry. To the south and west, the Penny Ryle Plateau features a karst landscape with numerous sinkholes, springs, and the extensive Mammoth Cave System, the world's longest known cave system, highlighting the state's unique geologic features. The western coal fields and the Jackson Purchase further to the west are characterized by flatter landscapes, extensive waterways, and fertile lands that support both agriculture and mining. The physical geography of Tennessee and Kentucky is pretty similar. From the peaks of the Appalachians to the fertile fields of each state's central region and towards the Mississippi River to the west, these two states share quite a lot. So why does Tennessee have so many more people than Kentucky? Tennessee and Kentucky, neighbors in the heart of the United States, share not only borders, but also similar geographic features and historic pathways to the United States. Yet despite these similarities, Tennessee boasts a significantly larger population than Kentucky. This discrepancy can be attributed to a combination of historic, economic, and social factors that have shaped the development and growth of these states over time. During the westward expansion of the United States, Tennessee's role as a gateway to the West further contributed to its population growth. The Cumberland Gap, a natural pass through the Appalachian Mountains, served as a critical passage for settlers moving westward and many more of those settlers moved south to Tennessee due to the state having far larger and bigger valleys than Kentucky's rugged and rough Appalachian Mountains. This initial influx of settlers spurred early population growth and economic development, laying the groundwork for larger Eastern Territory urban centers such as Knoxville. Economically, Tennessee was also able to diversify its economy more aggressively than Kentucky. While both states have strong agricultural roots, Tennessee has developed a broader economic base including manufacturing, services, and a world-renowned and thriving music and entertainment industry centered in Nashville. Meanwhile in Kentucky, the state's over-reliance on coal extraction through the decades diminished the need for a large, economically diverse urban area. This was further compounded by the rise of Ohio's Cincinnati, of which many Kentuckians call the metro area home. Moreover, Tennessee's aggressive investment in infrastructure and economic development initiatives, particularly in the post-World War II era, helped establish a more robust economic environment. The establishment of the Tennessee Valley Authority in the 1930s is a prime example. The Tennessee Valley Authority not only provided jobs, but also brought electricity, flood control, and improved navigation to all of Tennessee, and eventually parts of Kentucky. However, the impact was more pronounced in Tennessee, catalyzing further industrial growth and urban development that attracted population to the state. In the modern era, Tennessee's cities have experienced significant growth, driven by a combination of factors that include favorable tax policies, a lower cost of living compared to many other parts of the United States, 
and a strong emphasis on quality of life. These factors have made Tennessee particularly attractive to retirees, young professionals, and families alike. Nashville, known as Music City, has become a cultural and economic hub, drawing in people with its vibrant music scene, the healthcare industry, and higher education institutions. Kentucky, while also experiencing growth, has seen its population increases far more muted. The state's economy has remained more heavily reliant on traditional industries such as coal mining and agriculture, which have faced significant challenges in recent decades. Although Kentucky has made strides in diversifying its economy, including a strong emphasis on nurturing its reputation as the bourbon capital of the world, its overall growth has not kept pace with Tennessee's. Today, Tennessee would be led by the major urban center of Nashville with about 2.1 million people, Memphis with 1.3 million, Knoxville with 900,000, and Chattanooga with 550,000 people. Meanwhile, Kentucky's largest urban area would be Louisville with 1.3 million people, Lexington with about 500,000, and Bowling Green with about 180,000 people. Though it's worth pointing out that about 450,000 Kentuckians live in the Cincinnati, Ohio metro region in the far north. But while both states share a similar size and geography, their shared border creates an odd dip in the southwest, marking a peculiarity in an otherwise straight line border. The southern border of Kentucky, rather than following a straight line, takes a distinctive dip southward near its southwest corner. This deviation from an otherwise straight line can be traced back to historic decisions, geographic surveying challenges, and negotiations that occurred during the early years of the United States. The origin of Kentucky's southern border, particularly the dip near the Mississippi River, is tied to the use of natural landmarks as boundary markers in the late 1700s. When Kentucky was being delineated from Virginia, rivers played a significant role in defining borders due to their prominence as clear, natural markers that were easily recognizable on maps and the terrain itself. But there was no convenient river at the time delineating what was then Western Virginia with Western North Carolina. As such, the southern border of Kentucky was defined by the 3630 North Latitude Line, except for the area east of the Tennessee River. This deviation is the result of a historic claim Tennessee made on the area based on the Royal Colonial Boundary of 1665, which was supposed to extend the northern boundary of the North Carolinas westward to the South Seas. However, inaccuracies in mapping and surveying of the geography at the time led to a 12-mile discrepancy between where the border was intended to be located. The entire region between both states specifically relates to the Jackson Purchase of 1818, where the United States, through negotiations with the Chickasaw Nation, acquired lands west of the Tennessee River in what is now Western Kentucky and Tennessee. This negotiation adjusted the boundary to include the land between the Mississippi River, the Tennessee River, and the 3630 North Latitude Line, which accounts for the southward dip. Kentucky has fewer people than Tennessee, but it is growing, and its major cities, such as Louisville, are beginning to carve out a national identity in a similar way as Nashville did for Tennessee. All that's to say, we could see Kentucky begin to catch up with its southern neighbor in the near future. But before you go, we're going to Ireland! Last week, I asked my biggest fans, those of you still watching right now, to fill out a travel survey, and the reception was staggering. Apparently, a lot of you want to explore geography in person with me. And from that survey, most wanted to go to Ireland. So we're going. I'm not quite ready to announce dates, but it will be later this year. If you've already filled out the travel survey, great. You'll be informed when you can sign up for the trip. If you didn't fill out the survey, but want to be clued in on when more details are available, simply click the link in the description below to add your name and email to the list. This is going to be a very fun and very exciting trip, and I can't wait to explore the Emerald Isle with all of you. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Tennessee and Kentucky. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to watch more videos, click here. If you want to listen to the podcast, click here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.